you, Chairwoman Demings, and thank you again to all of our witnesses here today and to our colleagues who have joined us. So this question is for all of our witnesses. Um, like so many of the challenges that we face, um, borders and, and countries all share similar uh, challenges. So I'm going to pose this question to you all, starting with Mr. Brown. According to a recent media report, China now accounts for 27% of total global greenhouse gas emissions, which is now more than all other developed con uh, countries combined. Now, to me, this just seems like one more reason to add to the list of why China uh, poses an increasing threat to our homeland security. And I am concerned when it comes to climate change, uh, climate change issues that Beijing will benefit the most if we hamper American innovation via new regulations and efforts to stifle innovation. So to what extent do you see China's uh, climate impacts as a concern to the United States homeland security? Uh, thank you, Ranking Member. Uh, I think that this is a global challenge that requires every country, uh, every uh, state and local government to uh, rise up to the challenge and become energy efficient. Uh, we have started to pursue looking at, at changing our fleet uh, to promote energy efficiency. Uh, that is occurring across the state government as well. Uh, and so every every policy change to promote energy efficiency or, and and uh, as uh, as Mr. Nye uh, mentioned, uh, change the, the human impacts related to greenhouse gases uh, would be uh, appreciated and help to minimize the threat of climate change. Uh, again, uh, immersive managers are consequent managers. We deal with the, the impacts of uh, climate change. Uh, well, and, uh, and Mr. We, Brown, we I, I hate to I hate to reclaim my reclaim my time here, um, but um, I asked specifically about China. I I understand the the state's perspective. With that, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to turn it over to Mr. Bill Nye. Uh, Mr. Nye, could you comment on China's climate impacts as a concern to United States homeland security? Well, as we say, everything every single one of us does affects everyone in the world because we all share the air. So as uh, people in China try to reach the level of service that we have in transportation and energy use here in the States and the Western world, they're gonna use more and more energy. And what we want is for China and uh, places in the developing world everywhere to skip the greenhouse gas intensive step and go to uh, more energy efficient, more uh, renewably produced energy systems and electric grids everywhere. And so this, you know, as a guy, I was born in the States. I'm, I'm from the US. I want the US to be the world leader in this. Look around you, almost everything that you're touching and using right now is manufactured in another country. This is the up and the downside of globalization. But as those other countries go into more manufacturing intensive economies, they are gonna produce more, screen, more greenhouse gases. So what we wanna do is lead. Yes, I understand your, very much understand your concern about competition from China and so on. But this idea that if you give something to somebody, it means you've taken it from somebody else. This zero sum idea is not gonna work in the long run because we all only have one atmosphere. So let's be leaders. And I'll advocate again for wind, solar, geothermal energy, heat storage. And I would like us to take some risks and invest, invest in fusion technologies. This could, as I like to say, change the world. Now, Mr. Nye, before, and thank you for your comments. Before I jump to Ms. Williams, um, just quick yes or no. or Gentlewoman's time. I'm sorry, please, you have 47 seconds. Please. I was gonna say, don't, yeah. don't short me, don't short me, <laughs> Chairman Deming. Um, Mr. Nye, um, do you consider China to be a developing country? No, it's in between. You know, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, you, it's not easy to categorize it as one thing or the other. And when you go there, there are extraordinary well, cities with cranes on every block, and then the rural areas where people don't have clean water. Go over to Miss Williams for the remaining twenty seconds that I've got. Thank you, Miss Williams. Same question to you with regard to China's climate impacts as it relates to homeland security. Well, I think we have we have very much established that increasing risks that are driving cl climate impacts and disaster impacts 
are a tremendous threat to our homeland. And we need to look at this globally. I think Mr. Nye um, and Mr. Brown highlighted the fact that this is a global conversation that the United States has an opportunity to lead, but we don't even talk about climate adaptation using the same language that other countries use adaptation, mitigation have different meanings here and there. And we need to make sure that we are leading by example, but that we are also engaged in the conversation using the same terms, a same common understanding of what we are trying to accomplish so that we can tackle those that are the greatest offenders at driving these risks and impacts. The chair thanks that uh, Ms. Wilson